The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Robert Evander McNair was born December 14, 1923, in Williamsburg County, South Carolina. After serving in the U.S. Navy, he earned a law degree at USC and moved to Allendale. He was from Allendale County, one of our smallest counties, our newest county. Um, that's where he had, he had moved after the war with his, that's where Josephine was from, that's where his wife was from. And uh, won a successful house race there and been a successful member of the House. He was chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. He won this lieutenant governorship in a very hotly contested race. Senator Olin D. Johnston died and uh, Governor McNair recalls getting a, a telephone call Easter Sunday and um, Governor Russell asked him if he and Mrs. McNair would come up to Columbia and they did and they met and basically they began discussions in which uh, Governor Russell was going to resign the governorship. Uh, Lieutenant Governor McNair would accede to the governorship and in turn he would appoint Donald Russell as United States Senator interim until the next general election. In opening the conference, I would like to point out to you that these past 20 days have been extremely eventful for those of us in state government. I became governor rather instantly with about two days notice mm -hmm. and had almost two years head start. So when I was inaugurated, I'd been in office for two years and it was, might have been a surprise I was inaugurated. South Carolina is today in the midst of the great mid 20th century transformation shifting from a rural to an urban state, from agriculture to industry. The economy is in serious transition. We are living in a dynamic state, in a dynamic time. We have come a long way, and the challenges ahead serve as an even greater stimulus for continuing our surge forward. All of us who came out of the war realized that South Carolina had a long way to go and had to do a lot of things to compete with other states. I think all of us came back with a determination to do something for South Carolina and we had to begin with economic development. New industry in South Carolina means new jobs and it means new career opportunities for every citizen. And that set the trend for the rest of us who came along with a two-pronged program, one on economic development and the other on education because we felt they were the chicken and the egg and that we couldn't do one without the other. And that's where tech came, that's where branch campuses came, that's where the real broadened effort came on trying to provide a quality educational program for the young people of this state. The new governor also supported basic rights for all South Carolina citizens. The Voting Rights Act was one of the first things passed after I uh, was sworn in as governor. The voting rights law was most significant. You know, that was part of President Johnson's big drive, and uh, it had a great impact because it allowed, you know, everybody to register. And then the Civil Rights Act, of course, which changed, I think, changed life in the South, and as we can see, is still having reverberations around the country. School integration. You know, started out with freedom of choice to the so-called busing issue, to all of those various problems that we had to deal with. We had to face up to some basic issues in this state and make a decision on how South Carolina was going to go. We have made our position very clear that we will not tolerate violence, disobedience of the law, things of the nature we see elsewhere. We're very hopeful that uh, they will not happen in South Carolina. But violence did happen. In Orangeburg, near the campus of South Carolina State College, three students lost their lives in an attempt to desegregate a local bowling alley. Names such as Orangeburg, Lamar, and others remain as scars on our state's conscience 
and symbols of the human problems we have faced. During the last five years, we've known a period of unprecedented social change and readjustment. And we have learned the true value of human understanding and compassion for our fellow man. Even some of his detractors have said, uh, sans Orangeburg, the odds would have been pretty good that he would have been on the, on the uh, Democratic national ticket with Hubert Humphrey and with a, a moderate Southern governor, that might have made all the difference. And President McNair, who knows? I am now requesting that my name not be placed before the convention as a favorite son from South Carolina. And I hope you recognize and appreciate how grateful I am to you for your expression and also the sincerity of my request so that we might join in the nomination of the next president of the United States. Thank you. People frequently misuse the word statesman. Everybody gets to be a statesman if they survive public office. Robert McNair was truly a statesman. I really feel that the state has moved ahead, not because of me, but during this period of time. And I feel that I have been the most fortunate person in the world to have been able to serve during this uh, very crucial period. We've had our problems. We've had every serious difficulty that everybody else has had. But on the other hand, we've been able to accomplish more. And thus, it gives you a good inward feeling to have been around during this very dramatic period of time in the life and history of this state.